Hi, first grade. In our last video, we set up our notebooks. If you didn't get your notebook set up, this is what you're gonna do. First, turn to the very next blank page and write the title of your animal and by your name. You can pause the video and do it just like my example on the screen. If you're done, the next thing you do is turn the page and you're gonna write the table of contents because we're gonna have lots of exciting chapters in our chapter book. So you're gonna fill it out just the way I showed you here. Now, note to everybody, do not put page numbers down. At the very end, we're gonna do all the pages, but we don't know what pages things are gonna start and stop, so we're gonna wait till the very end. It's possible that we might have to take out a page if we made a mistake and we don't have to wanna have to renumber everything. So as soon as you're done with that, that's it, your chapter book is ready to go. Now today, I'm so excited we get to add the words to our introduction, the very beginning of our chapter book, chapter one. Are you ready? Here we go. So last week, Miss Duguay taught you guys how to write introductions for reviews. And she had that handy dandy little uh, anchor chart for you. Well, guess what? You already started your learning for your chapter book. Introductions in teaching books are very similar to introductions in review. Take a look at the anchor chart I have here. You can, uh, first of all, when you write an introduction for a, a teaching book, you write a clever hook. That's the same as with a review. Then this part's a little bit different. You introduce your topic. And then the last thing, you're going to tell what you're going to teach in the book. We're going to break it down and look at each of those pieces in a little more, bit more detailed way. And then I'm going to have you pause the video and do yours after each section. So by the end, we're going to have it all done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So first of all, just like in a review, you're going to write a clever hook, something really witty that's going to catch your reader's attention. If you think about throwing out a fishing line and reeling in a fish, you're kind of, with your writing, throwing out a fishing line and hooking your reader to get them, get all their attention and get them ready and excited to read your book. So there's lots of different kinds of hooks you can do, and we've been learning about them all year, but I'm gonna remind you in case you forgot. Number one, a question is a really awesome way to hook your reader in. Like for instance, I have two questions here. My first question says, what is the fastest animal on land? A cheetah. Or another question of a different kind of book might be, have you ever wondered what it's like to soar up in the sky? That's what the falcon gets to do every day. It makes the reader think, ooh, I have wondered about that. The second type of hook you can write is a riddle. Riddles are kind of fun because it makes your reader think a little bit. National Geographic Kids does a really good job at riddles, so let's take a look at a couple of them. The first one's the cheetah. Not. Let me get to the introduction page here. And this one says, what runs so fast, it races by in a flash. What looks like it cries, but has no tears in its eyes. What is covered in spots and lives where it's hot? It's a cheetah. Ooh, I really like that one because each of the little questions kind of rhymes. That's cool. The next one is a manatee. And they even put, who am I at the top? I have whiskers, but I'm not a cat. I nibble on grass, but I'm not a cow. I have gray wrinkled skin, but I'm not an elephant. Who am I? A manatee. That's awesome, I love those. Okay, I, I like the riddle. I'm, I, I really am liking the riddle. Let me see. Oh, the third type of hook is a surprising fact. You put a, a good surprising fact to get your reader excited about that particular animal. So elephants, elephants are the largest land animals on earth. An elephant can grow to be even heavier than a truck. Wow, that is a surprising fact. Elephants are found in parts of Asia and Africa that are hot and sunny. Okay, let's check out polar bears. I'm gonna scooch around. 
Polar bears are huge bears that look white and live in the Arctic. They're deadly hunters, but are also very beautiful. Polar bears are the largest carnivores on land. Oh, that's interesting too. Awesome, those are some really good, good tips for us. All right, now it's our turn. We're gonna give it a try. My topic is beavers, and uh, these are some ideas of some hooks that I came up with. I, I was thinking, how could I hook my reader into my beaver book? So I came up with a, the black one is a question. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have teeth strong enough to chew through wood? That one's okay. This one is my riddle, the pink one. What has teeth as long and as sharp as knives, uses its tail as a rudder and swims like a fish? Ooh, I kind of like that one. The last one is beavers are small, but they are mighty. Their teeth are orange because they have iron in them to make them so strong. Ooh, that is an interesting fact. Well, I ended up choosing this one. I went with the riddle, I bet you guessed, huh? Introduction, what has teeth as long and sharp as knives, uses its tail as a rudder and swims like a fish. All right, now it's your turn. I want you to pause the video, take out your writing notebook, turn to your introduction page, and I want you to write a clever hook in there. Get it in there. You can go back in the video and look at the examples again if you need to. Good job. Okay, did you get that clever hook written in your writing journal? I'll bet you did, and I'm excited to hear all your ideas. Step two in writing an introduction is really easy. This is like the easiest part. So. All you have to do is introduce your topic. And sometimes it can be quick, like, it's a beaver. That's what I'm gonna write. Let me show you what I mean. Here's my example. There's my lovely introduction. And then this is my sentence introducing my topic. A beaver does. It's quick and easy. Now it's your turn. Write a sentence telling what your animal is. Go ahead and pause the video and write it down. Okay, did you introduce your topic to your readers? All right, now you're almost done. We have just one more part. Now you're gonna tell your reader what you're gonna be teaching in the book. This lets your reader go, ooh, this is all the stuff I'm gonna be learning. I'm pretty excited to read this book. I'm gonna explain how to do this by showing you my whole introduction all put together and then telling you how to do that last sentence. And here it is, my whole introduction. And it says, what has teeth as long and as sharp as knives, uses its tail as a rudder and swims like a fish? A beaver does. Now here is the telling sentence. In this book, you will learn how beavers look, that's one thing, where they live, and how they survive in the wild. So I just took the topic here, how they look. I said where they live, and this one over here about how it protects itself and how they survive in the wild. It's as easy as that. And well, guess what? It's your turn. Pause the video and write a sentence letting your reader know what they're gonna learn in your whole book. Did you write a sentence telling your readers what you were gonna teach them? All right, if you did, then guess what? Now it's time to show off a little bit. I want you to take your whole introduction and go read it to someone in your house. Maybe your mom or dad or grandpa or grandma or the person who's watching you today. Show them how awesome of an introduction that you had and read it out loud to them. Nice job, first grade. Now you can kiss your brain. Congratulations, you did it.